Sarge, why are the guys giving it to the doggies? They're riding in trucks, numbskull, while you're marching. They look pretty badly beat up. Yeah, they do it then. Scuttlebutt says it's pretty hard going down south. Yeah, we'll find out soon enough. Recon always leads. How can we fail, Skip, with the shadow leading the show? What the fuck is a shadow? Lieutenant Phelps, the shadow of death. What the fuck are you talking about? He's a quiet fucker, Sarge. You never hear the bastard coming. You're sitting there, field stripping a cigarette, and suddenly he's there looking down on you. Why do you think we keep saluting that jab loving son of a bitch? He's bad juju. That's enough out of you three. Bad juju? Where were you dragged up? A swamp? The Shadow of Death, Cole Phelps. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick as always, and call me Tetra Ninja. We once again back playing some Elena War. This is the way she was slaying. I knew it. I knew it. I just needed the text to pop up for a second. This is the fourth case in the homicide cases. I should probably guess based on previous cases. Something doesn't add up, right? This doesn't add up. Lady, get out of the road! Oh, she is sauced. Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, the fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill, north downtown off Fremont Avenue. Skipper, is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short case. Key. Ray Pinker will let us know. He drove me up to Mulholland. Let us get He's good looking for a car. Greetings from sunny California. When's it gonna stop? Galloway. Where you at, man? Let's go. A fine morning indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Yeah, California's love a fad, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up at San Quentin, there will always be killers in this town to send. First the letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home runs. Sometimes you just gotta make first mistakes. Detectives, Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m., but it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. We got time of death. I don't think this is going to help us. Don't worry, Galloway will pocket it. Our driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Okay. 
What do we got over here, boys? No drag marks. The killer was moving around, surveying the scene. Yeah, another day, another time, standing over a little a dead body. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. Telephone. The hell? They see you rolling. Hayden. Well, aren't you fancy? The girl with the fancy hat just I fucked the shit out of me. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Never mind. You old. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. A hobo? Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt, horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. We're looking for Quasimodo. Okay. Now, let me make my phone call. Phelps badge 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services. 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thanks. All right. Go pick up my dry cleaning. Rusty, don't don't work too hard, man. Fuck. You can drive. God. And where exactly are we going? We don't have the address for this. No message. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written on them. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? Damn, that door just swung open. At least the rain stopped. We can change back into those white bucks now. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. You wrote the number down on that dress, is it there? F163. Here it is. Mrs. T. Terrelson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake.
Okay, let go, let go, let go. You know the way. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic types show a particular disposition for this stuff. Nordic types? What does that even mean? Seems like a nice place. Got a boat back there. About to break their hearts. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Terrelson? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that- It's procedure. You see to your girls. Mommy's dead. <laughs> they don't look like they're taking it that hard, do they? Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. Remember the boat being really You want to hear important. something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out as a suspect. We need to check if she was a regular. Okay. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Lars was out in the rain last night. Dry that shit up. Make a mess everywhere. Where's that boat? Aha, the rope. Looks like a match with the ligature marks. The boots. We could see if Pinker can match the impression to the crime scene. What size are they? So she went out without her handbag? That doesn't make any sense. At least she was spared that particular indignity. Wait, is there more? Can you turn it? Too bright. I don't think that's the right color. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. Where's your phone?
Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge twelve forty seven. How could I help, Detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thanks, ma'am. Some Oliver Twist. I don't think this is anything. What the hell's that? Incidental. Maybe there's something left in the handbag. Oh. She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. How about that? That it? There it is, yeah. I guess back in the day, since fingerprinting was a thing, and they just assumed that all cops would not be crooked bastards, so it didn't matter if we wore gloves or not. <laughs> By playing this game, we know that back in the day that wasn't true. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. It's a lie. I think you're lying, Lars. I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? The rope. <laughs> Matches the glove fits Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope the bowline from your boat is a perfect match Look, I know this looks bad I'm gonna have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place. That's right. Bobby had a bunch of people over We were having a good time She said she was bored and decided to leave Doubtful you let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin and calls me. I go and bring her home. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. I think is not the correct answer. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. And now she's dead. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. That's a lie. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? The wet jacket. You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Terrelson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to broads, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. 
Sounds like the Terrelson broad had her last drink at Baron's Bar. We should check the place out. Lead the way. Appreciate your time, sir. You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? Baron's Bar. So if you go to the hobo camp, if you can, I think it like screws up the investigation, so don't go to it. <laughs> Thank you, waitress. Gents, drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around, uh... 10.30, I think. The truth. On foot? In a car? By bus? How was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. I can't decide between the tuna fish and the chicken. Man, everyone writes everything down. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. He was super ugly, okay? The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. All right, two creeps were all over her. Promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh... USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red polo shirt. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. And it's the truth. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. And she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Clough. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. This is Bates? That's him. LAPD! Don't make me chase you, shitbird! <laughs> Can't let the son of a bitch get away! Uh, Bates! We just want to talk! Oh, you don't point at him a mile away. Gotta ride. Get in and drive. Gotta be more stealthy, Galloway. Come on, man. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered? We could have a killer on our hands. Oh my god. Don't run over any pedestrians or try not to anyways. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. Take the shot. Take the Hit shot. It. Clean this asshole off the road. Oh, shit. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Come on, Phelps. You're letting this lust get away from you. Oh no, I'm trying to not do any city damage. He's showing you how it's done. Maybe you shouldn't have waited for me, Phelps. Oh, you drive and I'll shoot next time. Huh? Hit him, Cole! Spit him out! Let's end this farce. Hit the freaking tire, dude! A million shots hit nothing but air. Stop the freaking agent from the matrix. No, you gotta get me closer. Spin him out. Oh, the world's wet. There you go. All right, all right, you got me. I've had enough. 
I'll tell Put your you hands when you've in had the air. Enough. Okay, Bates. You're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. Nope. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead. And your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Nope. Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. But why'd you run? You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice, private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. Ooh, a telephone. That blue light always means that's progress coming. Kind of like the little blue pill. <laughs> progress. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks for your help. Find the cabbie. All right, so here's the tricky part. You actually have to drive around here looking for the stupid cab. Come on. At car 11K, we have a response on your APB regarding yellow cab number 3591. The vehicle has been identified at a gas station. Now heading west on 7th Street. Garage on 7th Street. Let's hit it, Phelps. The cab driver might tie this whole thing together. I hope you're right. Are you serious? I have to freaking... Where's the map? Where's Seventh Street? Baron's Bar, Crime Scene, uh, the Hobo Camp. So right here. You see our taxi anywhere? Well, we gotta get to Seventh Street first. What if this is time? Take this main street right here. Try not to kill anyone. 11K, yellow cab number 3591. Sighted at the corner of Wilshire and Whitford. Repeat, Wilshire and Whitford. 11... Where the hell's Wilshire and Whitmer? I'm heading there. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Where's that cab got to now? Did you hear? Well, sure the there he is. I see it! LAPD, we're investigating a murder. What's that got to do with me? The fare you picked up from Baron's bar last night. What was the woman wearing? 
is a green dress. Oh, don't tell me something's happened to her. Tell me about her. She was with the sailor. He was all over. She wasn't having any of it. Said she just wanted to dance. But he had that look in his eye. Where did you drop them off? Is that the crystal ballroom? What time? Uh, after midnight. 12.30? Something like that. Thanks. You've been a big help. Well, that's gone and ruined my day. Okay, now we head to Central Station. Can you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? You drive. I need to go over the case notes. You know the way. You can drive. If you get in the car, Phelps, come on, man. Can you drive to this one? He's in an interview, too. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough, who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Good old interview room, too. I think old home away from inside. home, isn't it? Everything happens in a room, interview room, too. Don't even know what it is. Detectives Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble, that's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24 hour pass. I got there around seven. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure, we had a couple of drinks. Couple. Doubt. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. I caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. We already have, and it's doubtful. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. Where did you go after the Crystal Ballroom? Well, I think the wind had gone out of her sails by then. She caught a cab and I caught a bus back to the base. <laughs> Once again, doubtful. We spoke to the cab driver. Tell us what really happened at the Crystal Ballroom. I'd had enough. She was all upset about her husband bawling about her kids. She, she looked old. I left around closing, maybe 1.30. We got on a bus and she fell asleep on my shoulder. Which bus? An All-American 249. I went past her place. She jumped off and I stayed on it downtown. After that, I caught another bus to San Pedro. The Indiana's down there. She's being scrapped. And that was the last you saw of Teresa. Yeah, that's right. We didn't say much. I think she was kind of embarrassed. The cab driver said that you were getting pretty familiar with Teresa. That's not how I'd put it. Look at that smirk, you horny bastard. So the last thing you wanted was her playing hard to get. Did that make you mad, sailor? Yeah. It did. She knew what a guy's looking for, all broads do. Dancing comes second. And what happened at the Crystal Ballroom? Nothing. Not even a little hand relief. She had another couple of drinks, and there was no fun left in her. Just poured her guts out to some bartender. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the Bo has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. 
Thanks. Okay. What now? Drive all the way to San Pedro and check his locker? Let's see if the bus story checks out. There's a depot at 1660 Beverly Boulevard. Bus depot just magically appeared in the notebook there. Pulled the Houdini. Three suspects in the can and one on the hoof. And still no hard evidence on any of them. KGPL to car 11K. 11K, come in. 11K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Plenty of time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, we have Lars Carrollson picked up. 11K, roger. Talk to the man behind the desk. And thank you, ma'am. You have a safe trip now. Where are you boys headed today? LAPD. We're after the driver of All American 249. Would have been around midnight onwards last night. Uh, just a minute. That ass shake from the lady in the yellow dress, man. Break your neck. Frank Zeffirelli. He's your man. Where can we find him? Frank is out on the 7-4. Can you tell us the route? Hang on. Uh, I should have it mapped out here somewhere. Will you look at this clown? Wilshire 7. Oh, wait. We need to run the loop. It's about time some of those movie people went to jail. They think First Temple Street. Uh, we're not going to drive the whole thing, are we? Won't take long. We have a siren. Dear Lord. Oh, thank God they mapped the route for you. If you could just pull up right here, that'd be fantastic, Brew. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Oh, I gotta drive. And where exactly are we going? I will drive. I will drive, Rusty. Go. All American 7 4. Let's go get him. You go take a nip of your flask. Uh, this could be a long trip, Cole. Or it could be a short one. And here's me without my hip flask and only a pain in the ass for company. Way to kick off the drive in high spirits, Rusty. Comments like that put me in just the right mood for some legwork. Touchy. You know what your problem is? You don't like hard work. This kind of rigorous search is what police work is all about. Discipline. Save it, Phelps. You're just as bored as I am. Stay corrected. He forgot his flask. Out of my way, prowl car. Fuck you up. Fuck you up. Crazy Asian driver on the road. Don't know what I'm gonna do. Go Tokyo Drift style any second. What the hell is this stupid... Come on, dude. Cut off a cop. I see it. I see it. Stop. There it this is. This is starting to grate a little. You know, whatever happened to the joys of rigorous search? Dogged police work, you know? They went out the window about two blocks ago. Hey. Stop. That's the bus we're looking for. Ease in behind her and get her to the side of the road. I go to the front. Is some kind of problem, buddy? Don't buddy LAPD, me. we're investigating a murder. You had a sailor and a woman in a green dress on your bus late last night? That's correct. And the woman got off first, around 2 a.m.? Yeah, that's right. And the sailor stayed on all the way to downtown. Can you tell us where you let the woman off? On California Street. To tell you the truth, she looked a little lost, like she got off on the wrong stop or something. I didn't like dropping her off near that hobo camp. You've been a big help, Mr. Zeffirelli. 
this entire scene. So Sailor Boy escaped by the seat of his bell-bottom trousers. He left the broad alive. Left her by the hobo camp. Which means he's as good as killed her. We can't eliminate any of them, but the disfigured man should be our starting point. I'm gonna call for some backup. These bows hate cops. I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Yeah, if you think we ought to, then I guess we ought. I feel like a lot of this entire case is a little bit superfluous. Just not really substantial. But, you know, I think you can just skip most of it too. Still got five stars, but I gotta show you guys all the clues and everything. <laughs> How's it with a shotgun? <laughs> Oh my. Are you my Quasimodo? LAPD! We'd like a word with you! Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists! Come to move us on and steal what little we have left! Six rounds won't get us far. I need you to stay copacetic. We need to hold out to the cavalry. How do we do that? Like this. Fuck that and keep him down, fellas. If you want your rightful share, killing make you feel powerful. for it! God, just grab a shotgun. Finish him. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. Hey man, I fought the same war you did. Okay. Ooh, newspaper. The Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it, see what you find. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Benson, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them that they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors, but they've been moving it on to addicts and they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying and that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. God say, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. The plot thickens. Bloody rope. <laughs> A little convenient, isn't it? 
Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. Hey, an army duffel. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. You can dance. You can dance. Kind of a bad for him. This doesn't pertain to the case. All right, back to Central Station. Isn't that the coffee? Interrogation time. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession and we can charge the bum with murder. What room? We're going this way. One? Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Why were you rusty during the war? Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. <laughs> the people you have killed? Are you denying that you strangled Mrs. Terrelson with a length of rope? I'm not denying anything. You have to have proof, lackey. The bloody rope that's freaking in your shack, man. We found a matching piece of rope in your lean-to. I think we'll find the blood will match, too. I own no property. How could it belong to me? A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. This guy's crazy, man. He has that crazy look in his eyes. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed. But I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Where were you around 2 a.m. last night? At the camp. Lie. Lie. You were up on the hill. You were seen during the day. We have a witness. We have evidence. Come clean with me, Ackerman, and I'll see what I can do for you. I despise your pity. You have nothing that links me to this woman. Her we have you cold, Ackerman. Her purse and the ballroom ticket were in your lean-to. Tell us why you did it. I kill because people need killing. It's what I was trained to do. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. Another guy. Fruit peddler. Now yeah, we got an army vet. Motley crew we got going on, don't we? I'm down on his luck. I but a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. 
I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. Yeah. Boss man blowing us up. There we go. A very, very confusing case. It kind of sends you in different roads, but hopefully if this video will help you guys if you're trying to get everything that this case has to offer. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. As always, if you enjoyed, drop the video a quick thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time. As always, have a wonderful day. Stay sexy and don't get murdered.